patrol officer shot um, or if this wasn't a responding officer. I, maybe I missed that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I, I did. A, a, sorry, I thought you were going to ask something else and I kind of started speaking too soon. Uh, I, I asked if we knew who the other people involved were. Was it a school official, a, a student? She said it with this hour. It's just unclear. Um, but that is a good question, and I can circle back with her to see, look, is this KPD officer a, a school officer or an officer who is responding to the scene? Um, their, their involvement right now sounds to be m as support, um, and it's such a preliminary situation and so fluid. It may mm -hmm. be a situation where yeah. not all the information is made it from KPD to KCSO, but I will ask that while you continue to kind of give us a f an idea of how this uh, scene is evolving there at Austin East High School. Well, now that we know it's secure, um, it, that's what it looks like now, it's just a secured scene um, with officers standing by. Um, you really didn't see too much contact between two, uh, the community and officers, uh, just people wondering what's going on, um, and they're trying to just direct redirect traffic as you see roads are still blocked off or blocks um, from the school um, that's along Martin Luther King Jr. here in East Knox. Um, you see officers still trying to redirect traffic here. Um, not much. You don't see a lot of cars coming in like you did earlier. Um, so it looks like maybe they blocked off roads a little bit further back. Um, I'm seeing some units, uh, some ambulance, no lights on. Um, at first, you were seeing a lot of officers flying through, you know, going somewhere, um, but we don't see that much of much anymore. Gwen, um, so we're taking a live. You can't see this back on the ground, but uh, just to give viewers at home an idea of what we're looking at now, um, Pete Michaels, our eye in the sky, is watching the scene uh, as he flies above Austin East High School. So this gives us a better idea of the magnitude of this situation as we see what sort of perimeter police and emergency crews have set up here. Uh, again, for folks just joining us in Knoxville Police Department, officer is among multiple gunshot victims near Austin East High School here in Knoxville, of course, uh, a school plagued by violence, in some cases deadly gun violence within the last few months here in Knoxville. We can see um, multiple police officers on scene parked as this investigation unfolds. Do we have uh, the ability, guys, to listen to Pete Michaels? Can he chat with us on the air? If so, um, let's get his mic opened up. We can ask him a few questions. And while we work on that, uh, I should note that this is quickly becoming right. a story. Could, okay. This is quickly becoming Here's a story could, yeah. of national. Here's what I could tell you. Hold on just a second, Pete. This is quickly becoming okay. a story of national interest. We have um, editors from news organizations across the country now reaching out to us, uh, specifically the New York Times and other agencies now picking up this story. Pete, give me a better feel for what exactly we're looking at and what you see as you fly above Austin East High School, the scene uh, well, like where multiple gunshot victims have been found. Well, what we could do now is we're giving ourselves a space to stay away from uh, THP Chopper, which just below us, but you can see that all the main arteries, all the secondaries around the school are um, are blocked off. There's still a lot of equipment, as you would imagine, on the scene. And this, uh, one of those afternoons, I probably normally wouldn't be flying because there's so much turbulence up here, so that's why the shot is a little more shaky than normal. But all the mains coming inbound, I still see, I did see a few minutes ago, fire department and still an, an ambulance service on the scene. Uh, unit on the scene. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to try to reposition here for our producers and for you and try to get a little stable, more stable shot, maybe a little altitude. I'll have to work that out with the Sheriff's Department so we can work a little closer together. But uh, there's no way you get in and out of this uh, place right now near Austin East High School. But either way, I'll uh, have to shot a few more seconds and then I'll get back to you with okay. more live updates from uh, the sky. Pete, quickly, can you just show yeah. us this uh, reunification site? Can you help us identify on the screen where that is? The baseball field, I'm assuming it's the big triangle there behind the school um, and the parking lot just beyond. Um, we see the baseball diamond next to the football field. Uh, it sounds like it's the Wilson Avenue see if in I South Hembry. Yeah, let me see if I can find that for you and then uh, get back to you in just okay, a couple perfect. of minutes and pinpoint it. Okay. okay? We'll get right. back in a few minutes. Pete, thank you so much. We All should. Right, get your sh okay. Thank you, Pete.
We should mention as he continues to try to pinpoint some of those locations that we're talking about, we'll take you back to the ground scene here uh, where law enforcement um, and emergency personnel are now gathering. Knox County Schools is now acknowledging this uh, via Twitter. The superintendent saying that they are gathering information about what they're calling a tragic situation. But this is interesting. The superintendent says the school building has been secured, so that's good, we know that, and students who were not involved in the incident have been released to their families. Um, so you wonder, what is, is there some sort of hidden meaning behind that statement? The superintendent saying students who were not involved in the incident have been released to their families. Um, so again, this makes us have even more questions. Who exactly is involved here? At this hour, the only confirmed uh, victim that we've been able to share with you is a Knoxville Police Department officer who is now at a local hospital. Knox County Sheriff's Office tells us that officer, a male, is getting treated. Um, but who else was involved? And it would seem that based on the superintendent's comments here, um, that he may be implying that students were in fact involved in this in some way or another, whether or not they saw what happened, uh, were nearby when something happened, or directly involved. So that's information that we're going to continue to look for and keep a close eye on. Um, CBS News now picking up this story as well. We're telling you that this is quickly drawing national attention. Uh, CBS News, the latest major news outlet to uh, begin covering this story as we continue to learn more about what's unfolding here at Austin East High School. We should mention uh, Gwendolyn Ducree, our reporter on the scene, was literally five minutes away from the high school covering an event with students from Austin East High School, families from the community, egged with five uh, gun related incidents in the last couple months here. Um, some of them with deadly consequences. We've had at least four students shot and killed um, in gun violence situations. So this is a community that is marred by violence already. There was about five minutes away an event underway to look at ways that we can prevent this sort of violence. And here we are. Gwen left that scene, rushed down here. Um, for more violence. Gwen, do you have, and I don't know if you can still hear. Every day this week, they had something set for these kids, um, Vine Elementary as well as Austin East students um, to get together to um, spread peace and awareness and put the guns down. That was supposed to be the message every day. Uh, it, the week even started out, out, started out like that. You know, we covered uh, just this weekend, a block party, um, a stop the violence block party. Um, we do see the park director out here as well as um, looks like she's walking alongside an Austin East official. Um, we might be able to get some more information there. But um, yes, every day this was supposed to be something fun. Today we were just going to cover um, a paint paint the shirt. Or, Gwen, I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you again. Tell us, yeah. tell us again who we are watching walk up towards the school there. Yes, yeah, so this is the park director. Um, this is uh, the park is essentially a liaison between the community and police. Um, their boots on the ground whenever a situation um, happens, whenever, um, say, a civilian or just anyone has a complaint with KPD, um, they are involved. They get involved, and they're the middleman between the community and police. Um, so I can imagine that. Um, there are probably going to be some type of um, briefing or a meeting held uh, between um, the director. We heard when McKenzie is on the ground here, uh, try giving her a call, but I can imagine she's busy um, and held up right now. Um, so we are starting to see some city officials out here. Um, or at least know that some are out here on the ground. Mm -hmm. Oh, and sorry, Gwen, not to interrupt you again, but we've got Pete Michaels now flying again above the uh, site that police have set up as a reunification site for uh, loved ones who may have had uh, family members or students nearby when this situation unfolded. Um, this uh, is the parking lot. We don't see much activity there. Pete, you may have a better, oh, yes, better yes. view from your vantage point. Uh, are you seeing anything of note that you think is worth pointing out? This is at uh, Wilson and Hembury Streets in Knoxville. Uh, right behind the school, there's a baseball diamond, and that is where Knoxville police have set up this reunification 
point, um, the superintendent, while we wait for Pete to join us here. Oh, okay. He's got his mic on. All right, Pete, anything of note that okay. you're seeing uh, at this particular reunification site or in this of the scene in general? Okay. All right, now what's here? We're looking for him. Uh, we've got we've got a lot going on up here. You can imagine um, we're right. I'm going to zoom to get this back. You can imagine I'm right um, north of uh, the downtown Island Airport, and what we have to do, we've got uh, we've got a number of airplanes around us. We need to keep an eye on that situation as well. So we'll try to give you the shot now. As far as finding the um, area behind the ballpark, I we see most of the activity in front of the school, uh, the side streets, back to the ballpark again. The unification area, they will give you that shot. All right, I was here looking. But that's really all I could add right now. You, you can imagine between what's going on up here uh, and the, the uh, traffic in the air and traffic on the ground. Now, it looks like the area that um, the matter was talking about, it's a little more busy off of Wilson. And again, we've had to climb a little bit higher to try to give you a steady shot. As you can imagine, flying 100 miles an hour and bumpy conditions could be a bit of a challenge. So let me continue to uh, to circle, focus on the shots we can get you, and try to pass on more specifics as we get it here, just um, around the vicinity of Austin East High School. Okay, thanks, Pete. Check uh, back in a few minutes. Yeah, we appreciate you continuing to fly and keep us up to date on the situation there. Um, we should note Knox County Sheriff's Office also flying. Uh, we had for a period of time there wondered whether that implied that they were searching for somebody. Um, but I did get off the phone with the uh, spokesperson for the Knox County Sheriff's Office. They say that they believe the scene is secure and that there is no active search for anyone. Rather, that helicopter is flying simply as added support to crews who are on the ground. So just another measure of security, uh, eyes from above, being able to watch this situation. We are learning from the superintendent of Knox County Schools um, that the situation is secure and that students who were not involved have been reunited with their families. So that would explain why we're not seeing a lot of activity at that reunification site when Pete Michaels was showing us the site from the air. Didn't look like there was much activity there. It would make sense now that we're hearing from the superintendent of schools that all students have been reunified with their families, except for the students who may have been involved. And that's kind of one of those uh, phrases that makes you stop and say, hmm, what are we implying with that statement? The superintendent basically insinuating in that tweet that there may have been students involved in this situation, whether directly or indirectly. Did they see something? Were they in the area when something happened? Were they directly involved? So that's one of the big questions leading into this afternoon that we have yet to answer uh, is exactly who else was involved besides this Knoxville police officer who we know is a UT Medical Center being treated for injuries. He is considered one of multiple people shot in some sort of situation that unfolded outside of Austin East High School this afternoon. And we're watching Gwendolyn Ducree off camera there walking towards the scene uh, to speak with folks in the area. So we're going to give her a few minutes to kind of continue to work that angle as we learn more about this situation. Um, she said that there were initially, as she arrived on scene, a, at least one person kind of running towards the school, crying, um, visibly upset and emotional. And it's not hard to understand why. This is a school that has been plagued by violence this school year. We've had five shootings involving Austin East High School students in the last year. Um, I believe at least four of them deadly. So this is uh, becoming a situation that this community, this neighborhood is absolutely fed up with concerned about, alarmed over. We see Gwen there talking to officers who have been holding down a checkpoint for the last oh, 40, 45 minutes or so on this scene. Um, she works to learn a little bit more. Off in the distance, we see that ambulance there. Um, further on down the street, there was a fire truck there that has since left. We've seen a lot of cruisers coming in and out of the scene. But if you're just joining us, here is what we know at this hour. 
A Knoxville police officer has been shot, is among multiple gunshot victims after some sort of situation, shooting situation unfolded at Austin East High School. This is a magnet school uh, plagued by violence. That officer, UT Medical Center now getting treatment. It is unclear the extent of that officer's injuries or whether this was an officer responding to the scene or an officer who works security for the school. This is uh, the information that we are still trying to get from authorities. We do expect there to be a news conference shortly. Um, we also know that the vice mayor of Knoxville um, asking for prayers essentially as she headed towards the scene to get a handle on exactly what's been going on there. Um, we have Pete Michaels who is flying from the air watching this. Uh, it, it largely looks like a secure scene and that's the information that we're getting from the Knox County Sheriff's Office as they offer support um, or play I guess a supporting role in this situation. The Knox County Sheriff's Office telling us it's their understanding that this situation is secure, that people living in the area don't have any cause for immediate concern, that there is no immediate threat to her understanding. Um, we're, uh, we've got a bunch of people in our newsroom working to get a handle on some other pieces of information that are pertinent to this story, so we expect a few updates here in a moment. but. Um, some telling information coming from the superintendent of Knox County Schools, essentially saying that all families have been reunited, so students have been reunited with their families, except for students who are, you know, directly involved somehow in this situation. Uh, those students have not, are among the only students who have not been reunited with their families. Um, what he means by that uh, is kind of unclear at this hour. Does that mean students who saw something? Does that mean students who may have been directly involved? Um, you know, we're still trying to get a handle on that information. Pete Michaels now flying from the air, uh, kind of keeping a, a tabs on the situation uh, because this is a large scene with a reunification site set up behind the school, and then we've got the scene at the school, and then we've got obviously probably patrols happening around this neighborhood. So, Pete, what are you seeing that's uh, noteworthy at this hour? Okay, Amanda, we're trying to uh, juggle a few things up here for you. What I can tell you is that not much has changed. We've checked all stable the shot, get the shot squared away for you. We talked about the football field. We talked about the ball field. We talked about the unification area. It, it, it doesn't appear to, well, there are a few more cars now coming in, trickling in with uh, law enforcement. It looks like most of the activity is going to be out in front of the school. Uh, I don't, I've seen all the mains and all the secondary and tertiary routes in here are blocked. Uh, there's still units from the ambulance service, the fire department on the scene. A lot of officers um, just lined up along the street with the back toward uh, the area. If you know Wilson and all the main, all the secondaries into that area, they're going to be blocked. So don't have a lot to add. All we can do right now is to show you um, what it looks like from the air, keep an eye on things. If we find something specific, or Amanda, if you think of something while we're shooting this shot, you want me to either back up, back down, turn left, you know. Yeah. It, it might be right in front of me and I can't see it. Yeah, Pete, if you can just show us the, the baseball diamond one more time, that was the uh, reunification site. And it, it sounds like it still doesn't look like there's much activity there which would make sense based on what we're hearing from the uh, school superintendent. So it doesn't look like we've really got much happening out that way. Um, the superintendent saying, look, the situation is secure, the building is secure. Um, students who were not involved have been released to their families. So it sounds like there's not a lot of reunification yeah. happening. Are you able to get any closer to um, the area where there's the highest concentration of police? I would be curious to know where the focal point of this scene is, um, that might give us a better understanding of where exactly a shooting may have occurred or unfolded. Um, and it may also, if we don't see one focal point, help us understand if there's a potential that there were multiple scenes. Are you able to see well, all from, from your vantage point where the most police officers seem to be clustered? Well, they seem to be clustered to an extent in front of the school. Matter of fact, I, I mean, I can't tell from here whether they're, they're that's normal tra traffic, but I can see a lot of activity on the street. But then back toward parts of Mary Street and Castle Street, Wilson, you're going to find a lot of activity. Of course, it looks like um, 
I can't tell if there's law enforcement there. You have some along the side of the road, parts of Castle. Uh, some of the traffic off of Magnolia Avenue trying to turn down in this area is not going to happen. But um, they're spread out, and I would agree with you, Amanda. I would, from what I can see from the air, it looks like things have stabilized, at least for now. Um, the law enforcement's got things well under the control, and I haven't uh, spotted anything else alarming at this point. Whatever's happened, um, they're investigating. Uh, we'll try to go over we'll, to uh, UT Hospital, try to get a shot there, but for now, you're seeing it as I see it. Okay, yeah, Pete, if you, if you are able to pop over to UT Medical, it would be interesting to see what sort of uh, activity we see over there, as we know that the Knoxville police officer who was shot is now at UT Medical Center being treated. Um, it's unclear the extent of that officer's injuries or in what capacity he was working uh, when this situation unfolded. Did he respond to the scene and was shot then? or was he working with the school in some capacity? So those are things we're still trying to get a handle on. We should mention just now coming into the newsroom, the governor, Governor Bill Lee, addressing the situation during his virtual school call that's been happening for the last few minutes here. Um, governor Bill Lee saying that he's praying for the families and people involved, um, anyone who may have been affected by this shooting. He says he's thinking about all the parties involved and keeping them in his thoughts and prayers. Um, for folks who aren't familiar with what has been happening at this particular high school this school year, here is the backstory. And the headline is this school has been plagued by violence. Um, the neighborhood has been dealing with the shooting deaths of four of its students. Um, up until this point, it's really been largely unclear if any of those shootings were connected in any other way besides the fact that the victims were students. Um, investigations are underway. Four teens shot and killed since the beginning of this year. The very first one happened January 27th. Justin Taylor was one of the victims, the first victim, 15 years old. You remember this, I'm sure. He was shot and killed while leaving a parking lot and fellow students witnessed his death. The second, Stanley Freeman Jr., 16 years old, shot while leaving Austin East High School, the third, a 15-year-old. So we have had, again, four teens, students of Austin East High School, shot and killed since the beginning of this year. All of this started January 27th. Investigations are underway. Arrests made in at least one of these cases, but police have not been able to say how or if any of them are linked. Um, and this has been a, a huge focal point for detectives trying to figure out, are they connected? What's sparking this rash of violence? And earlier today, in fact, Gwen, within the last hour, Gwendolyn Ducree, our reporter on the scene, she was about five minutes away with a bunch of Austin East High School students and Knoxville police for a, a sort of stop the violence type of rally that cities and communities across the country are partaking in this week that we're also um, commemorating here in Knoxville. And they were in the middle of celebrating this big effort to stop the violence when it comes to kids. And within a few minutes of her being there um, and about to go live for us, she was rerouted here to this scene, five, five minutes away at Austin East High School, and here we are. Um, if you're just joining us, an Oxville police officer is among multiple people shot near Austin East High School. The school superintendent says that the building is secure and that students who were not involved have been released to their families. Um, Gwendolyn Ducree, if you can hear me, I did see you speaking with officers a minute ago, wondering if you were able to learn anything in those conversations uh, or if there's anything new developing on the scene that you can share with us. Yes, I was told that we can expect um, a public information officer still. Uh, where we're at. Um, Scott Erling, that's who that is. He told me to stay where I'm at and stand by. Um, as far as any difference, uh, what we can see um, on this scene, uh, police are starting to question witnesses or at least people who live by. Um, I'm getting a feedback, guys, if, if that can be handled, I'm sorry. Um, but we do know that they're going door to door. They're still talking to witnesses right now. We're not going to show them um, for safety 
but uh, they've been speaking with them for quite a bit now. Uh, but that's what I can tell. Uh, more people are starting to walk toward the school. I could not. I was told to turn around. Okay. Um, um, which was probably, yes. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, Gwen, if you don't mind, because we've got Pete over at UT Medical Center, so we want to go over there quickly. But let, I'm going to give you another quick break here. If you don't mind, try and chat with some of those witnesses and see if there's anything that they are willing to share with you. Um, and then we'll come back to you here in just a second. But first, we want to go with Pete Michaels over to UT Medical Center. Pete Michaels, of course is our eye in the sky, our traffic reporter. He, um, by the way, if you don't know, operates his own plane and does these live reports for, for us. So he's the pilot and the reporter at the same time. So uh, Pete, I know you're juggling a lot there, but if you can quickly kind of walk us through what you're seeing right outside the emergency room there at UT Medical Center, where we know that that Knoxville police officer is being treated for injuries sustained in this situation at the high school. Well, the, the, there's heavier than normal traffic just trying to move on and off Alcoa Highway at the Cherokee Trail. You can see the, um, I think that's the, I'm pretty sure that's the main entrance to the uh, emergency room. So there's a lot of activity there. I don't, I, I was expecting to see many more um, uh, uniformed officers or at least uh, patrol cars, but we do see plenty of activity. But right now um, it's acceptable relative to Alcoa Highway on and off. Uh, it's acceptable around uh, the hospital area. Um, just about all entrances to uh, whether it be the B building, A, B, C, D, E, H buildings, there, um, there's plenty of activity there. And again, I just, it's hard to tell from the air while we're circling exactly um, where the most activity is. But I can tell you, uh, there's another medical helicopter just to, well, there's th very unusual. There are three on the scene uh, right here at the hospital. Usually it's just one or two. But to give you a long answer to a short question, uh, it's acceptable. There's plenty of activity around the emergency room and around the hospital overall as we continue to circle UT Hospital. And we'll stick around here for a few more minutes, Amanda, and then we'll head back to Austin to see if anything's changed in that area, okay? Okay, great. Uh, Pete, thank you so much. Continuing to monitor University of Tennessee Medical Center where we know the uh, Knoxville police officer who is among multiple people shot after a shooting at uh, Austin East High School. This is where that officer is being treated. The extent of his injury is unknown. We are learning that the ATF is now involved with this investigation. They are confirming that they are coming in to assist with the investigation. Uh, we're in the process of trying to get more information from them and hopefully a live interview as well to see the extent of their involvement and why they've been called in to help. Um, we're also talking with the uh, fire department, Knoxville Fire Department. Um, they're saying that they did, in fact, also help respond to this shooting at Austin East High School. They're calling it a shooting at the high school. Um, the fire department says they were able to make contact with help from the police department um, with patients. So, sorry, I'm just reading this statement live with you, so you're hearing it out of my mouth as I'm reading it for the first time. A spokesperson says, quote, we were able to make contact with help from the police department, shielding our paramedics as they have advanced to the patients. So this is a pretty big deal here. We're learning from the fire department that they essentially arrived on scene uh, following a shooting at the high school and shielded paramedics with help from the police department as they advanced towards patients. So this is telling us that the fire department played an integral role in reaching victims of this shooting and doing all that they could to extract patients from this scene and get them medical attention as quickly as possible. It sounds like they were able to do this with help from the police department that was shielding paramedics. That is the terminology they're using. It's unclear what they were shielding paramedics from. Was it the threat of something that could happen or an active threat? So that'll be something that we need to dig into a little deeper as we continue to learn more about this shooting at Austin East High School that has left multiple people with gunshot wounds, including a Knoxville police officer. The extent of those injuries unclear. We did take just a live look at UT Medical Center where we know the officer was taken. Not a heavy presence of police there, um, but we'll continue to monitor that. We do know that Knox County Sheriff's Office has sent one of their deputies out that way to monitor the situation as well. So we're continuing to stay in contact uh, with all the different agencies that are supporting this situation. Um, let's see, we uh, get another note here on the news desk. Um, Ashley Boley, one of our reporters, um, 
is saying that she heard from the behavior interventionist at Austin East, Quanta Fields, ver via text message. Um, that behavior interventionist at Austin East High School telling our reporter Ashley Bully, I'm still at the school. Nothing has been shared with staff yet. I'm hoping to hear something soon. So we are understanding that there are staff members still inside the school at this hour as police um, continue their investigation. Gwen is on the scene. You're looking at this live shot now. She's with our chief photojournalist, Keith Smith, right here at this uh, location outside the school, talking to witnesses. So it sounds like police um, are working to get a handle on exactly what happened, both from witnesses in the neighborhood, in the community, and perhaps from staff who may still be inside of the school. Uh, we are also hearing from the superintendent of Knox County Schools that the building is secure and that all students who were not involved with this situation have been released to their families. So um, it, initially there was some concern that is there still an active threat? It does not appear that that is the case. The Knox County Sheriff's Office telling me that they do not believe that there is a threat any longer to the general public, that their helicopter was circling the scene as um, uh, just as support from the air. Uh, Pete Michaels is continuing to fly for us, giving us a unique vantage. So because of Pete, we're not only able to look at UT Medical Center where that Knoxville police officer is being, being treated, perhaps other victims could be being treated here as well. We're not sure, um, but he's watching the scene there. And then he's also been able to watch the scene above the high school for us. Pete, you're at UT Medical. Any updates out there? Oh, Amanda, I don't do, I don't have that. And uh, at the moment, and just to kind of share secrets with you on this, We've got uh, the camera that's kind of tries to stay locked in on the scene. It's kind of a, a, a gyro lens that locks in, but uh, when we kind of juggle around, we have to kind of let go of the control for that to turn the mic on. But with all that said, nothing new. There is maybe the volume here to the uh, toward the uh, building H in the emergency room could be a little bit heavier. Of course, from what I can see here, it uh, does look like the volume is up as you would expect. But I don't see... Um, I don't see anybody blocking the way into the hospital. I see, uh, let me show you this if I can real quick. That's Alcoa Highway, and that's a Cherokee Trail uh, off-ramp. That usually does get busy, but you can see as you enter the hospital. It, a little bit earlier, it was lined up here, but all entrances to the hospital are, are open and you're able to get by it. So to give you a long, uh, long answer to a short question, no, here's the entrance to the uh, emergency room. And again, things have settled down there as well. Yeah, in There's some in some ways, Pete, in some ways, Pete, uh, you know, it's it almost um, makes you not as concerned. The fact that we don't see a massive police presence outside of the hospital. Um, typically, when we know that an officer mm -hmm. is is gravely injured, then we expect to see a massive outpouring of support gathering um, out outside of emergency rooms. And the fact that we're not seeing that here gives you a little hope that all all is okay um, or maybe not as severe as it could possibly be. So uh, again, we, we hate to speculate on a condition of an officer who has been the victim of a gunshot wound after a high school shooting, but the fact that we're not seeing droves of police and law enforcement agencies and officials uh, flocking to the hospital, you know, you kind of take that um, into a consideration or account when thinking about the gravity of the situation. Yeah, I wouldn't have any argument. Uh, I wouldn't have any argument with that at all. Um, I, we saw a couple of officers just a moment ago walk out calmly outside the emergency room. It looks like they've got um, a few officers at the entrance to the emergency room. So I don't think anybody's going to be uh, just driving through there casually. But you can see that for yourself. So with that said, we'll keep an eye from uh, the over the over the top of UT Medical Center. And then as soon as I break with this shot, guys, I'll go ahead and back, head back toward the high school to see if anything's changed there, okay? Okay, we'll continue to monitor that situation with you, Pete. Thank you for keeping that scene up. Um, you got it. We're going to take a look at a map really quick uh, as we continue to monitor the scenes here. This map shows you um, the, the locations in this particular community where there have been shootings involving Austin East High School students since January 27th. So we've had a rash of shootings uh, involving Austin East High School students, four or five uh, to be exact, 
within the last few few months here and this is a map showing okay we've got Austin East High School there on the top of the screen and then all the different locations where these shootings have happened so this is this is why we pay even closer attention to what's happening right now is because of the the history the rash of violence centered on Austin East High School within recent weeks and months we do want to share some information if you're just joining us just to get you up to speed shooting at Austin East High School multiple gunshot victims including a Knoxville police officer that officer is being treated at UT Medical Center that officer's condition is unknown it's unclear who else is involved but the superintendent of schools tells us the building is secure and that all students have been reunited with their families except for students who may have been involved with this situation. Um, so that implies that students may have witnessed something or been involved with something and that those students um, you know, have not been released to families. Whether that's because they are being questioned or interviewed, we are not sure at this hour. But we do know that the building is deemed secure. Uh, we're also hearing from a staff member who is inside of the high school. Ashley Boley, one of our reporters, getting us this information. She's talking with um, the behavior interventionist for Austin East High School. That person's name is Quana Fields. That person telling Ashley Boley, I'm still at the school. Nothing has been shared with staff yet. Just hearing a bunch of rumors, not really anything confirmed, but hoping to hear something soon. So it appears that we've got at least staff members who are still inside the school. We know officers are going uh, around the community, surrounding homes, talking to witnesses, looking for witnesses. So I imagine that there's some level of questioning and interviewing happening within the school as well. We want to share some interesting information that we were just able to get from the Knoxville Fire Department. The Knoxville Fire Department confirming to WVLT News that they responded initially to a shooting at Austin East High School and that they made their way towards patients with the help of police officers who acted as um, support for them. Essentially, the police department shielded paramedics who advanced towards the victims of this shooting to get those patients and extract them from the scene and get them the medical attention that they needed. So uh, it's unclear if the police were shielding paramedics from an active threat or just from the possibility uh, of some sort of danger. So it's unclear, but we'll continue to try and get information on that. Also learning within the last few minutes here, the ATF has been called in to help. They're gonna assist Knoxville police. Um, the ATF telling us no explosives have been found, but they do help, keep in mind, with the investigation of guns and shell casings. So that would keep in line with what we already know about this situation. You see Gwendolyn Ducree there off in the distance. On this live shot, speaking with officers who are manning the checkpoint here. Um, this is a checkpoint where only authorized personnel are allowed to enter the scene. So the medical examiner had been on scene. Uh, it's unclear in what capacity, if they've left, why they were called, if it was a, for a precaution, or if there was a specific reason that they would have been there. Um, the TBI is also helping in this case. This has quickly become the focal point of uh, many national news outlets, to name a few. CNN, CBS News, New York Times, all reporting on this. Our company is sharing this coverage with our more than 100 television stations across the country as well. So Knoxville, Tennessee, for the wrong reasons, becoming um, the center point of national news at this hour as a shooting investigation unfolds at Austin East High School. We know that a Knoxville police officer is among multiple gunshot victims at this hour. Um, unclear what that officer's condition is. We are working to get as much information as we can. But our Pete Michaels, who is typically our traffic reporter, but is also a pilot, flies his own plane, and is able to give us a really good vantage point of different scenes from the air, took us to UT Medical Center a short time ago, and uh, we saw that there was not a heavy police presence outside of UT Medical Center, which we're gonna take as uh, an indication of the level of injuries that this officer may have sustained. If it's serious or grave injuries, you typically expect to see a, a bunch of officers congregating outside of a hospital. We hate to speculate, but we are taking that as a piece of information that we're going to put in our pocket and just hold on to it as we learn more about the situation. Pete is back now live over Austin East High School. 
as the investigation continues to unfold. And for folks who are just joining us, Pete, a few minutes ago we were talking about is there any way to really identify um, the focal point of this investigation? Is it the entrance to the school? Is it the backside of the school? Does it look like there could potentially be multiple scenes? And when we're able to look from the air and see where all of the uh, cruisers are um, gathered, sometimes it can tell a story. So tell us again what sort of pattern you're seeing from the air there. Well, I'm looking at Parkview, uh, Louise. I'm looking at uh, Wilson Road. And, and I can't quite make out where this the building is uh, to the northwest part of the, uh, the school. Um, but uh, there's a lot of activity here. But overall, and, I, and I, tend, I agree with Amanda. I mean, when I first arrived here, I, I expected to see a lot more activity. And again, we're not going to speculate, but hopefully we take that as a good sign. A good sign. You would think if it was a, if it was a, uh, if it was a uh, maybe a worse situation, we would definitely be using the, the football field for a number of reasons. But that. That's vacated. The, even the, the baseball field and even the parking lot, where we understand you are going to have uh, parents congregate and meet, reunite. There's a there are a few more cars here now, Amanda, but not um, again not what we would have expected. I think parents are being well informed at this point. Yeah, and this would be and in line with away. this would be in line with what we're learning, Pete. That this is largely a secure scene. We're learning from the superintendent of schools that the school is secure, the building is secure. Learning from the Knox County Sheriff's Office to their understanding that there is no active threat. Um, so that's at least the good news. It doesn't sound like, by all accounts, that the immediate neighborhood or community needs to be worried about any sort of active threat at this hour. Um, the governor, Governor Bill Lee, was actually in the middle of addressing the state about his education plan and whether schools, um, you know, how schools are going to go to virtual learning next year. He is, of right. course, pivoting during that address to talk about what's unfolding here in Knoxville. And we do uh, have a little piece of an interview that we'd like to share with you really quick. I want to acknowledge a very difficult and tragic situation we have happening across the state right now in Knoxville, Austin East Magnet High School. There's apparently a school shooting there. Um, I've just been informed about that just recently. Um, we don't have a lot of details. It's a current situation uh, right now, and law enforcement will update us appropriately. Uh, if for some reason I step out of this, that, that's what that will be for, or we'll have limited, uh, we may have limited time after. But I just wanted to uh, make reference to that and, and ask uh, for you all to, for those who are watching, online or otherwise to uh, pray for that situation and for the families and the victims that might be affected by that in our state. All right, that's Governor Bill Lee addressing the shooting that is uh, the investigation that is now underway at Austin East High School after a Knoxville police officer is among multiple people shot this afternoon. Um, David Sykes, you want to bring that into me? We're getting some new information into the studio. As he brings this new information over, I'm just going to keep you up to speed really quick here. All right, thanks, David. Uh, the TBI is now en route to help with this investigation. The ATF is involved as well. Um, we asked in what capacity are you involved? They said uh, no explosives have been found, but of course we do know they assist with the investigations of guns and shell casing so that it would make sense they would be involved in this in some way. Um, we do also know that the medical examiner had been on scene. It is unclear um, if that was a precautionary measure or if there was a concrete reason that they would have been on scene um, and that they may have had to leave as well. Um, we're I, back in the director's booth, guys. It sounds like the ATF, a spokesperson, may be on the line available for an interview. Okay, so as soon as that person is ready, um, Mickey French, the special agent in charge, we're going to get them on the line here to ask a couple of questions. Um, what we do know, the Knoxville police officer who is uh, among the shooting victims is at UT Medical Center. It is unclear who else was shot in this situation. Was it a student? Was it a staff member at the school? Was it, you know, somebody just nearby in the area? We just don't know. We are waiting for uh, officials to share that information with us. Of course, they likely still trying to get a handle on this situation too. This is a very fluid situation. We're in the first hour 
or so here. This is a time when they really spend their energy uh, getting, getting all their facts in order, all their ducks in a row. We know that they're already in the process or have been in the process of interviewing people in the area. We imagine that's happening inside the school. By the way, the superintendent tells us that building is secure. Um, and we've heard from at least one staff member inside the building telling our Ashley Boley uh, that they're still at the school. Nothing's been shared with staff yet and they're hoping to hear something soon. That's coming from a behavior interventionist at Austin East High School. Again, the governor, we just heard from him addressing the situation. Uh, he was actually in the middle of uh, an address about virtual learning when he had to pivot there um, to get updated on what's happening here in Knoxville and then releasing a statement that he's praying for the families who may be involved here. Um, Gwendolyn Ducree has been on the scene out there talking with officers and witnesses. Um, is she in a position where we can see if she's learned anything? Okay, we're going to see what she can find out. We've also had Pete Michaels watching the situation at UT Medical Center um, where we know that the officer has been is being treated at a certain point. And if you live downtown, you probably heard the Knox County Sheriff's Office helicopter circling and circling and circling. We're not really hearing it anymore. I assume they're, they've since landed. But um, initially, they were helping in a support capacity. They told us, we're just in the air to, to provide another set of eyes on this situation. We do not believe that there is any active threat. And that would make a lot of sense from what we're seeing from the air. Not a lot of urgency uh, in the activity on the ground. Pete Michaels, any update from your vantage point as you fly above? Gotcha. Okay. Pete is traveling to another scene, so he's not live with us. This is a look at the scene that he shot from us a few minutes ago. This is not live video, but I am live on air, air with you here. Um, but this kind of gives you a sense of the lack of urgency that we're seeing on the scene, which would tell us that everything we're hearing from police and investigators is that this is a secure situation. So that's the good news for folks who live in this neighborhood. Doesn't sound like you have much to be concerned about or worried about no real active threat. One of the more interesting pieces of information that we've been able to get our hands on comes from the Knoxville Fire Department who initially responded to the scene. They're telling us that, yeah, we showed up here for a shooting and when we arrived on the scene, Knoxville police were shielding paramedics as they advanced towards the patients. So essentially what we're hearing from the fire department is that uh, we get on scene, there's a shooting, police helped us safely get to the victims who needed medical attention. So we're seeing how they work in tandem um, when responding to these situations. Guys in the booth, I didn't actually hear what you said. Can you repeat that for me? Got it. Okay. Uh, we are working to get a, a phone interview with the special agent in charge with the ATF to talk about their involvement in this investigation. We've got multiple agencies now working in tandem on this investigation. I'll just rattle them off here for you real quick. ATF, TBI, Knox County Sheriff's Office, KPD, Knoxville Fire Department involved as well. Um, I think I said TBI for you there. And um, a lot of people wondering, okay, uh, students. How were they involved? In what capacity? And that's one of the big questions we have at this hour. Oh, okay, I'm just hearing from my producer that we have Mayor India Kincannon, Knoxville's mayor, uh, live with us now. We want to take a listen. Um, is she on the phone or giving a live news conference, guys? You. I mean, tell me what you've seen so far um, being next to his bedside and, and what his spirits are like. Well, first, I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with everyone been, who's affected by this shooting and this incident. Um, I was really glad to have the opportunity to meet with the officer who was hurt, and he's conscious and he's in good spirits. I met with his wife. Um, he's going to be okay. And uh, I thanked him for putting his life on the line to protect uh, the students and staff at the school and he said he'd rather that he be hurt than anybody else and uh, he's in very good spirits and um, looking forward to the successful surgery. The, the medical staff here is very on top of it and uh, taking good care of him. Now, this is not the first shooting in this area just this year. Um, tell me what your message is to the community. My message is that we all need to work together to stop the violence. 
we're working together with city, with, with parents, with the school system, with uh, community-based organizations. We all need to work on this together. Uh, KPD is doing their part, and so is the school. It's, it's a big challenge, and we're going to need everybody in the whole city to work on this together. We want to wait. Okay. Thank you. All right. That is uh, Mayor India Kincannon. We're hearing from her. Obviously, she's at UT Medical Center. This is interesting, and this is good news. Folks uh, wondering about the condition of the Knoxville police officer shot at Austin East High School. Mayor India Kincannon giving us a reason to breathe a sigh of relief at this hour. She says that she just met with the Knoxville um, police I'm officer talking, and uh, that he is conscious yeah. and in good spirits. I'm coming back talking. And uh, um, when you are live, if you can hear us, so give us just a second here. Um, basically, Mayor Andy Kincannon saying that the officer that she just met with who was shot at Austin Ace High School is in good spirits, is conscious, and uh, that he is there being treated. Uh, he is with his wife. The mayor says she met with both of them. And that the officer says, look, I'm glad that it was me, that I could be the one there to, to do what I needed to do to keep students safe and protect students. Um, so that's the good news. We are hearing that this Knoxville police officer who was shot at Austin East High School is okay. Conscious, alert, in good spirits, happy that he was the one that could be there to take take the hit and pro protect students at the high school. Um, that is coming from Mayor India Kincannon. So that kind of confirms what we had been suspecting, that the officer was not gravely injured um, based on the police presence or lack of police presence that we were seeing at the hospital. So that is the good news coming from the mayor. Um, we'll continue to get more information on that end of this situation. Gwendolyn Ducree has been talking with uh, police officers on the scene at Austin East High School and witnesses to the this situation and people who live in the area. Uh, Gwen, give us a feel for what you've learned within the last 10 minutes, because it's been a few minutes since we've talked to you. Yeah, I apologize about that. I was speaking with a woman saying that she's a parent um, of a student here um, telling me that she has not been able to get in contact with her daughter. Um, she says that she's waiting by to see if that her daughter, uh, who is a student here at Austin East, will answer the phone. Um, I asked her, I couldn't imagine what's going on in your mind right now, but if you could tell me what's what, what are you thinking and she said you know what I'm just keeping faith right now uh, that's all I know how to do and that's what I'm going to do I love this community I love this school uh, my daughter is supposed to graduate uh, go to prom here and that's what she's going to do and so that's what that mother is telling me although she says she has not been able to make contact with her daughter who was here at Austin East today for school I did also speak with um, some folks who were standing by uh, around the time telling me that um, you know this is what happens they're, they're used to violence in this area, but they never can get used to it being uh, affecting children. Um, that's a lot of what you hear anytime we're having to get in front of this camera and talk to you about the gun violence um, that is affecting these students. It's, it should not happen, especially not to children. Um, I'm still trying to confirm. I've been hearing a little bit about what you've been confirming here, um, Amanda. Um, we do know that some folks um, we're saying that they heard possible gunshots. Um, multiple people told me that. I'm, I'm waiting to hear that uh, to be confirmed. I'm still waiting for that public information officer to get here. Um, we're still being told to stand by um, and that we'll be getting some additional information, hopefully, uh, when, we, when we speak with him, Amanda. Okay, and just getting some additional confirmation here on the status of this Knoxville police officer. We just heard Mayor India Kincannon say that he's conscious, um, alert, and in good spirits. She just met with him in the, within the last few minutes. Um, Kimberly Glenn with the Knox County Sheriff's Office just texting me and saying, yes, he's in stable condition. So good news on that front. Now we've got to move on to the other people who were shot. Um, they have not been identified. Uh, their conditions have not been discussed. So that's kind of the next phase of this process. Who else was involved with this? Um, Gwen, I do want to circle back. I had a question for you about the woman that you just uh, spoke with. She said yes. her daughter is a student at Austin East High School and that she has not been able to make contact with her daughter this afternoon. Um, is, does she know for a fact that her daughter is still at the school or is there a possibility her daughter may have left, doesn't have her phone on and she just can't make contact? 
That's what she's hoping. She she did mention because of all this chaos, she's hoping that she's with a friend right now and they're just trying to figure out what's going on and, you know, they're children. So she's hoping that she's just not by her phone right now, uh, but that she's okay. Um, but again, she doesn't know where her daughter is. She's still standing by right now, just trying to figure out. Um, I encourage her to try to go up here and uh, speak with police and let, let them know that, you know, I'm trying to get in touch with my child. I haven't been able to thus far, um, but I, honestly, I think she's just pretty stunned right now um, and just don't know what to do next. Um, so <sighs> okay, yeah, a lot to process out there. Gwen, yes. as you continue to learn more, a couple yeah. different scenarios we could be dealing with. Keep in mind, we do know from the Knox County Schools superintendent that the building is secure. So we at least know that that situation is under control, according to the superintendent. We also know that students who um, weren't directly involved, they've all been reunited with their family members. Um, the superintendent says only students who uh, may have been involved have not been released to their parents. That could mean a range of things. That could mean students who saw something and are being questioned by police. That could mean students who were somehow involved. That could mean students who were nearby. We just don't know at this hour. So um, that's what we're still trying to get some more information about. Uh, we do know, I'm sorry, I've got two people handing me notes here. Do you, uh, my news director, Mary Beth, is bringing something over that we can hopefully share with you. A lot of fluid stuff happening here in the newsroom, so bear with us. Um, we'll get to that in a second. Ben, what are you finding? Okay, this is not what we want to hear. All right, Knoxville Police just sharing a release with us. This is information that we hate to have to share with you. Thank you, David Sykes. Okay, go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to take a look really quick here at a, a comment from the state's education commissioner as I read this news release. Oh, it's not there. I'm sorry. Okay, give me one second. Okay, this is what we're learning from the Knoxville Police Department. A male subject who was possibly armed in the school is what prompted police to respond to this situation. When police arrived and approached the subject, shots were fired. That KPD officer that we've been talking about was hit at least one time and taken to UT Medical Center. We, again, we know this with injuries that are not expected to be life threatening. One male was pronounced dead at the scene while another was detained for further investigation. So this has now become a fatal shooting at Austin East High School, according to Knoxville Police. There are no other known gunshot victims. So it sounds like at this hour we have one male dead at the scene, um, another detained for further questioning, and a Knoxville police officer who was shot but did not suffer life-threatening injuries. Again, I'm going to repeat this to you because this is information just coming into our newsroom that we want to make sure that we share with you accurately and that you hear this because this is a major development in this story. Knoxville police say that they responded to Austin East High School after receiving reports of a male subject armed in the school. As officers approached the subject, shots were fired. An officer hit at least once. One male pronounced dead at the scene. Another detained for further investigation. No other known gunshot victims. So it sounds like two people shot. The person who is dead on the scene and the officer who is expected to survive um, suffered non-life-threatening injuries at the scene there. Um, it is it sounds like we've basically got ourselves an officer-involved shooting and uh, we've got to understand a little bit more about this situation. Was this male subject who was possibly armed in the school a student um, or somebody else? And so that's going to be the next phase of the investigation and the, uh, the process of reporting information to you. That's something that we would like to learn as quickly as we can. Uh, Erica Lunsford is at University of Tennessee Medical Center where the Knoxville Police officer is recovering from his injuries. Erica, we heard from Mayor India Kincannon just a few minutes ago that she had met with the officer and his wife, that he's conscious, he's alert, and even in good spirits, going as far as saying that he was glad that he was the one at the scene today. He was the one that took the gunfire in an effort to keep students safe. What are you learning uh, out there tonight? I mean, that's so far what I've learned, that information that you just shared about that officer, and that is good news in this sad situation. And right now, outside the emergency room, it's pretty calm. Um, 
not a lot of action going on here, which could be hopefully good news as well. But again, just that officer, we know that he's inside the hospital right now and he's doing pretty good talking and the mayor can share that he is again in good spirit. So that's all that we have right now. This information. I'm going to reach out to other officers around the scene and see if they're able to give any more information here. I'm going to also talk to some of the people that might be visiting uh, and see if they have any connection to this officer as well. Um, Amanda? Walk me a little bit, walk me through, Erica, what you're seeing on scene there. I imagine we've got officers at the entrance kind of watching who's coming and going there. Um, but beyond that, do you see much activity or is this just kind of a typical day at UT Medical Center? It doesn't really look much out of the ordinary. When I came in, there was one officer kind of just monitoring me, telling me to go park in the parking garage. But that was it. Um, so far, I mean, it's pretty quiet. There's an officer uh, by the entrance of the hospital. His cruiser is there. Um, but other than that, it does seem like a typical day. Uh, it's really quiet. A few people are sitting outside. Um, I have not been inside yet to check and see how things are inside the emergency room. But other than that, everything seems pretty, pretty calm here for the most part. All right, good. Well, uh, this is, you know, uh, this is some information that I think is giving folks at home uh, the ability to rest easy, knowing that this officer is going to be okay, that he's alert and conscious and talking and in good spirit. So we'll have you continue to monitor the situation out there for us, Erica, and uh, we'll touch base with you here in a few minutes as we continue to learn more about this situation. If we can go back live to the scene where the investigation is unfolding, now it makes sense. We're hearing that the uh, medical examiner is on the scene. Um, it, we were unclear initially if they had left or if they were called for a specific reason or if it was just uh, an in-case type of situation. But now we're learning that there is an exact reason the medical examiner is there because one man is dead on the scene. Um, still working to learn how that person was involved, uh, whether it was a student or you know some other person that just happened to be in the school. Um, Mickey French with the ATF is a special agent in charge. As you probably heard us report here in the last few minutes, ATF among many agencies now involved in this investigation. Um, special agent French, thank you for joining us here. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what your teams are looking for and how you expect them to help above and beyond what Knoxville police would be able to do on their own. Well, thank you. Uh, on any kind of critical incident response, uh, you know, the first thing that we do is we uh, deploy a, an advanced team or several agents, CFOs, to the scene to get kind of the feel and nature of the incident itself. At that point, we then deploy resources as needed. So if you had a, an explosive type incident, we would uh, we could deploy uh, explosive experts that could render a device safe. And Special Agent French, we should just pause for a second and make sure it's clear that there were no, there's no indication that there was any explosive found, correct? That's correct. I'm just kind of giving the, the overall sense. Got it. This is what, what we do when we go out there. Uh, we can bring out canines to, that are explosive detection canines. Those are also can be used not only on explosive devices, but also to, to find cartridge casings, spent cartridge casings, as well as firearms that were used. Uh, we have the ability to send out, you know, national response team or a special response team. And the bottom line is we first want to ensure the public safety. Uh, at that point, we would then begin to assist our state and local agencies on any processing of the evidence. And where ATF helps the most is the ability to trace the firearm and then we can also assist with NIBIN, which is the National Integrated Ballistics Information Network, which is a system designed to place uh, evidence, cartridge casings into a system to see if it links to any other crimes around the country. So it sounds like the, the, the main focus for you guys is uh, we've clearly got an officer involved shooting here, um, identifying whose gunfire hit who in this scenario. That would be correct. And how long of a process is that for you typically? Well, you know, some of it's gonna depend on uh, how fast we can get to the evidence. We can do an urgent trace on the gun and get results back within hours. Uh, when it comes to the ballistic evidence, the fired cartridge casings, we can enter that into the NIBIN system relatively fast. The turnaround time is generally 24 to 48 hours, but in, 
incidents like this, we would also be sending these to a crime laboratory where the experts can can confirm, you know, which casings came from which gun. And is part of the reason that the ATF is called in and Knoxville police doesn't just do the investigation on their own for reasons of transparency. Um, it, it looks better if you have an outside agency doing the investigation and there is higher confidence in the results of that investigation if it's um, if an independent agency is the one doing it. Well, that is that is correct, but a vast majority of critical critical incidents have an overlap of federal and state jurisdiction. So, the federal nexus gives the ATF the ability to assist our state and local partners. And, you know, simply put, ATF will respond to any significant incident involving firearms, explosives, or arson. And how many um, crews or team members do you have, um, ATF agents, how many ATF agents do you have inside of the building right now? And have they given you any indication of what they're seeing inside? Uh, I don't know exactly how many. I know I initially had three or four uh, special agents out there and a task force officer who is assigned to the Knoxville Police Department. Um, I, you know, we have an office there in Knoxville. We also have a satellite office in Greenville, Tennessee. So uh, all of our resources responded and are available. And have they told you what they've what they've seen inside? Is this looking to be a complex situation that will require um, a long investigation or something that they may be able to kind of be in and out within the day? Because again, we're talking about a, you know, a high school and we're in the beginning of the, the school week here. I can't imagine that they would go back to school tomorrow, but um, you know, we do have five days left in the week. Yeah, I don't have any of the specifics on the actual scene and the evidence that's there and how long it might take, but I would imagine that the school is, is going to be working with the Knoxville Police Department as the lead agency to determine when they can open back up. Mm -hmm. And are they looking specifically for where bullets traveled? And does that include, you know, really combing through walls and, you know, the floor? And are they just looking for, I would imagine they need to look and see where the bullets traveled and how they traveled, not just picking them up off the floor and marking the spot. That's correct. You know, they'll they'll do some photography work. They'll do, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of measurements and diagrams. Um, they'll they'll ensure where everybody was when the incident actually happened. Uh, they'll get witness statements, interviews. Uh, they'll look at surveillance video if that's uh, you know available. Uh, so it's it's a lengthy process, but with all of our personnel there working together. Uh, and, you know, kind of dividing and conquering tasks, you know, we can be relatively efficient with it. All right. And just to recap, how many, how long do you think until we have a better understanding of whose gunfire hit who in this officer involved shooting? Uh, you know, I can't answer that. Knoxville Police Department's going to be the lead agency and they'll, they'll determine when they can release that information. Um, so you're saying, uh, Special Agent French, it could not in i guess my question is how long until you all know not necessarily that information is released to us in the media but how long until you all know within your agency what exactly happened here are we talking days or weeks um i would say i would have an answer on some of the specifics uh later this evening oh wow okay pretty quick all right well special agent french thank you so much for joining us um hopefully we can circle back with you here a little bit later tonight and see if there's any updated information is there anything else that you think is important to add that i didn't ask you about no thank you okay thank you so much for your time and we'll stay in touch throughout the evening as this investigation develops um did i hear that right guys in the booth that we've got pete michaels at ut medical center but did you also say casey wheelis is reporting for us this afternoon as well All right, Pete, take us down to UT. Hey, uh, Tell us what you see. Yeah. Well, Amanda, right over Alcoa Highway, of course, the off-ramp Alcoa Highway Cherokee Trail, the entrance to the main hospital, UT Medical Center, appears, everything appears to be about normal in and out of the main entrances. I don't know if I'll have time to get back around to the back side of the building to the emergency entrance, but some of the um, driveways into the main executive parts, uh, some of the other buildings um, back around toward Building H, which is down near the, well, that, that's the emergency room entrance right there. Uh, there are a lot of units from the ambulance service there. There are still officers, as you would imagine, on the scene, but not 
nearly as many as I we, we saw a little bit earlier. But as we come back around the back side of the building by um, the uh, Holland Ross Center and the Cherokee Trail, that all looks about normal. So right now, out and off Alcoa Highway, the Cherokee Trail, into the hospital. If I come back around, there was um, a lot of activity toward the back of the building, but again, I'm not I'm not in position to say that it's anything terribly unusual. Just a lot of traffic, and still some folks parked at the entrance to the uh, emergency room. But again, as Amanda mentioned a little bit earlier, I think it's probably um, just as well that there's not a lot more going on here. Maybe that's something to um, something to be thankful for. But if we see something change. We'll keep an eye on things from the sky. And by the way, and when I was over the um, Austin East High School a few minutes ago, things appeared to be settling down there, except for a few areas around uh, Mary Street and maybe Wilson Avenue. You still cannot uh, approach the building around Austin East. Unless you can you can get around the school on the backside of um, the school, but not into the school area. So keep an eye on things from the sky. Right now over um, UT Medical Center, over the um, right. part of uh, downtown Knoxville. All right, Pete, thank you. We hey, appreciate Amanda. that vantage point. As Pete kind of shows us the outside of the building, we can give you a glimpse into what's happening inside. Mayor India Kincannon met briefly with the Knoxville Police Department officer who was shot in this situation and his wife. She told us moments ago that he's in good spirits, alert and conscious, and said really he was glad that he was the one there to be able to protect students. We're learning a little bit more about this officer involved shooting uh, one officer, the KPD officer hit by gunfire, but expected to be okay. Um, a male pronounced dead at the scene and then a third person, a male, is being held for questioning at this hour. So a massive investigation underway as we learn more about this officer involved shooting, deadly officer involved shooting at Austin East High School. That's what's happening today. Um, there has been a lot of violence leading up to this point involving Austin East High School students. Five shootings, uh, most of them deadly since January 27th. Uh, morning anchor Casey Wheelis is back now to help us with our coverage. She's in the newsroom to talk a little bit about the history of violence that has plagued Austin East High School. Um, just about an hour or two ago, Gwendolyn Ducree was about five minutes away from this scene um, covering a massive event between police and Austin East High School students and neighbors about curbing violence in this area and just terrible timing. I mean, getting sent to this shooting at Austin East High School. Do we have Casey Wheelis in the newsroom and can we shoot over there to uh, get some more information from her about the backstory here? Casey, refresh our memories on the, the different shootings, four or five, I believe, since January now. Yeah, Amanda, that's exactly right. And I'm, I am in the newsroom right now, and we're getting a lot of information. So if you hear other voices and things like that, that's what's happening. But I do want to kind of give you a little bit of a background. We've been telling you about these shootings that have started back in January. This neighborhood is hurting. We are hurting with them. Let's start on January 27th. Justin Taylor was 15 when he was shot and left in a parking lot. The second, Stanley Freeman Jr., was just 16 years old. He was shot while leaving Austin East High School. The third, 15-year-old Janaria Muhammad, shot outside her home. And Jamarian Gillette, a 15-year-old, was shot and killed just last month. And if we do have a map, I kind of want to show you. These have all been centered around Austin East High School. Now, we are not connecting these. Police have not connected these shootings to each other. They have not connected these shootings to what happened today. But you can see they are all just blocks away from the school. One of the shootings there, Stanley Freeman, happened as he was leaving school. Other students witnessed his death. This is just unbelievable to hear for this community. And Amanda, even this morning, you mentioned Gwendolyn was there. Even this morning as we got ready for our morning newscast, we previewed that event. We were talking about the healing, the community coming together in, in what has been such a difficult time. So to even fathom something like this could happen, is you can, you can feel what that community is feeling and we are hurting with them. And Amanda, we are continuing to ask police questions to see if any of these shootings may be related in any way, shape, perform we'll let you know what we learn here in the newsroom yeah and that's a, that's a big piece of this conversation that we've been having for months now since the first shooting you know it became a clear pattern in the following weeks after that first shooting involving an Austin East high school student Casey and really police up until this point have not been able to connect or find a pattern 
amongst these shootings besides the fact that they all involve Austin East High School students. So that's been this big mystery. What if, what is there, if any, connection? And um, in terms of investigations, only one has suspects. So. Mm -hmm. This has really stumped police, uh, and it's been a, a difficult process for them as well. Um, so, yeah, a lot more to come on this. We'll continue to rely on you in the newsroom as we learn more. And I've got uh, David Sykes walking in here with some new information. If you learn anything there, we'll come to you, too. Yeah, um, and I mean, I was going to say real quick while you get that information, police have been asking since January for someone to come forward. People witnessed these shootings. People might know what happened, but so far, no one has come forward. And so they really are relying on the community to come together. They can give anonymous tips for these shootings as they work to kind of deal with what has been happening. Yeah, and a double-edged sword for them as well. They're like, we do want your anonymous tips because that's going to give us a starting point. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we do need people to go on the record and say, I saw this and be willing to testify in court if we're going to actually follow through and prosecute. So that's been uh, tough for them. But yeah, we'll continue to follow that. Um, David Sykes, one of our assignment editors, just walked in, Casey, and mm -hmm. mentioned, handed me this paper. We've got another shooting uh, that mm. could that's possibly unfolding uh, on Trusla, which is near Center Drive. Um, it, it was initially paged out as a drive-by shooting, um, and they are searching for a suspect. Is that correct? And how far, David, is this from Austin East High School? Under a mile. So we're now in the situation where we've got another possible shooting happening within a mile of Austin East High School. Casey, uh, we've got Zach Rickens headed to that scene to learn more about that. Um, but police uh, confirming that this is now another shooting investigation underway within a close vicinity. That's David Sykes you just saw walk walking behind Casey, by the way. Um, who's feeding me information. Another shooting near Austin East High School. So for folks who are just joining us, let's recap them. And Casey, I'll keep you here because I'm going to come back to you for the backstory. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just joining us, Knoxville police have an officer involved shooting on their hands at Austin East High School. A KPD officer was hit by gunfire. That officer is expected to be okay. Um, this is a look at the scene earlier today when Knox County Sheriff's Office had their uh, helicopter flying above just as a measure of added security for no other reason than that. Oh, this is live. So they are still um, this. Ah, gotcha. Okay. It's the, I forgot about the other shooting. So this is actually live. This is not our taped footage from Austin East High School earlier. The Knox County Sheriff's Office has got their helicopter back in the air because, again, we do have that other shooting investigation now underway about a mile away from the high school. Uh, this was called in as a possible drive-by shooting. So this is the other scene, the other investigation, shooting investigation that's unfolded in the last two hours here or so. This happened in the last few minutes. That's why we are seeing Knox County flying again. This is Truslow Street um, near Center Drive. East Knoxville area, about a mile from Austin East High School. At this hour, it's unclear if there is any connection between this current investigation and the shooting investigation unfolding at Austin East High School. Um, but to keep you in the loop on the Austin East investigation, let's finish that update before we move on to this. Austin East, Knoxville police officer shot, expected to be okay. Um, a male who was considered armed had entered the high school. That person is dead at the high school. And then a third person, a male, is detained and being questioned at this hour. So unclear exactly who these two guys are. Was it a student? Just people walked off the street? We really don't know. That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of, and I'm sure investigators are hard at work trying to learn as well. Um, we do know that all students who were not involved with this have been released to their families, reunited with their families. Um, it sounds like ones who may have seen what happened or may know something are still uh, on scene, perhaps being questioned by police. Um, okay, this is just coming into the newsroom from Ashley Boley. Um, this is in reference to the invest piece of the investigation that we're just learning about. Police telling us that a male subject who was possibly armed in the school is what prompted this whole scenario. Uh, Ashley is saying that Austin East students were required to have clear backpacks starting on March 8th. 
Um, she says the two times that she visited the school since then, she saw students with clear backpacks. Um, and that's not something that I knew. So thank you, Ashley Bowley, for sharing that. Um, we'll see how that comes into play. And I imagine the reason that that policy was instituted was because of all the violence that has been happening um, with Austin East High School students in recent months. Okay, again, if we can go back to that other situation, if you're just joining us, we've got two separate situations. Right now, we've got a live look over Austin East High School. There was a deadly officer involved shooting there. The officer is okay. Then, in the last 10 minutes, we've learned about another shooting investigation, a possible shooting about a mile away on Truslow Street. That's where we're hearing that um, what was reported as a drive-by shooting unfolded within the last few minutes. Investigators confirming to us that they are working that. Guys, do we have that live picture there now? If we can go to that live. Okay, perfect. Um, this is the live shot at the high school, Austin East High School. Uh, this is Mayor India Kincannon. You see her on scene there. She has had a busy afternoon um, bebopping from UT Medical Center and back over to this scene trying to get a handle on all the facts and all the information. She's already visited with the Knoxville police officer who was shot in this deadly officer involved shooting at Austin East High School. Um, she met with the officer and his wife and, you know, gave us some positive news, news that I think a lot of us were hoping for, which is this officer is okay, in good spirits, and uh, by her account, happy to be in the position to protect students at the school. Um, again, we're learning from police that they entered the high school after getting reports of an armed male sub 